I don't have a greeting. Like, I should have some sort of standardized signature greeting. Hi! We'll work on that. Today I'm talking about something that's actually kind of relevant instead of out of the blue like most of the things I talk about. I just read In the Heart of the Sea, The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex by Nathaniel Philbrick. Uh, raise your hand if you ever heard of the Whale Ship Essex. If you're like me, then you probably couldn't really raise your hand. Um, let's see, I first heard of this book when I was in college. Uh, my ethics professor liked to talk about books sometimes, and since it was an ethics class, cannibalism did come up. I don't know if it comes up in other people's ethics classes, but it did in mine <laughs> several times. And uh, he said that he had read this book and he really liked it, and I wrote down most of the things he recommended because he had pretty good taste. I kind of put it by the wayside and didn't really think about it, um, uh, <laughs> then, okay, so last week, or maybe two weeks ago, I was on IMDb, and I saw this little thing that said trailer for In the Heart of the Sea, and I was like, <gasps> that's, that's the book, isn't it? That's, and sure enough, it said the whale ship Essex, the inspiration for Moby Dick, and I was like, no, they can't make a movie out of it, I haven't read it yet. And lest I become one of those people who's like, well, I haven't seen the movie, and I can't read the book yet. Unless I become confused like that, I ran out to the library and picked it up and read it in two days because it was that gripping and good of a story. Um, telephone. As I was saying, uh, it is the inspiration for Herman Melville's Moby Dick. Um, is somebody going to get that? Do I have to get that? hope not. I hate talking on the phone. Um, okay. <clears throat> the book starts with a... It stopped. <laughs> the book starts with a chapter on the history of Nantucket. About the Quakers and their complete dependence on whaling as their form of business. Um, and then <clears throat> Philbrick, who is a kind of Nantucket head, I guess, like leading authority on the history of Nantucket. Um, he draws together different accounts of the incident and uh, Nantucket's historian at the time, and just weaves together this seamless story about this whale ship that everybody thought was going to be a really lucky ship. It goes out, a few things happen along the way that you're like, oh, this is a bad sign, maybe you should go back, maybe you should stop. Um, somewhere off the coast, far off the coast of South America, uh, they are hit by a sperm whale. Probably accidentally, but then the sperm whale comes back and hits them again, and this time it is definitely an attack. Uh, attacks from whales were a pretty unprecedented thing at the time. And within ten minutes, the whale ship sinks, and the men all escape in three whale boats, and they're left to survive for like 90 something days in the middle of the ocean. Now I have this weird kind of fear and fascination with the ocean. Uh, I don't know how to swim so it's scary that I might be stuck out there. Yet I like going on boats. I like the breeze and the smell and the sea and the spray and the salt and everything. Uh, I managed to survive a whale watch um, although by far the scariest part was when these two whales were like coming right for us and I was like, oh my goodness, they're gonna sniff us over and really heart-pounding moment, but um, I, I don't like pictures of things deep underwater, it's just, it's so dark and silent and creepy and it bothers me. So the idea of being stuck out in the middle of the ocean is just terrifying, um, so it's really interesting story. Uh, as I mentioned before, cannibalism happens. Survival cannibalism. Um, whoa, really rough story. Some really grisly details too, which is kind of par for the course in a survival story. It wasn't just Melville that was inspired by this. Uh, Poe and Emerson both wrote things about the Essex incident, which 
uh, tells you what a big deal this was in the 1820s, 1830s, and um, even the, the consequences of the thing were huge. Like, this was a big deal. He really made it like a, a, a good, concise, chronological story. Like, he kept everything together and um, added lots of things to it, you know, stuff that we have found now, scientific things, little geological tidbits, geographical notes, things that people found out later. But he brought up all these things, though, that I wanted to investigate. Like, I have a whole list here of other stories that I want to know more about, which is really fun. Um, it also makes me want to read Moby Dick. I have pushed it off. I read excerpts, which was enough for me to write a paper on it for a, some test. I was always put off by all the whaling stuff that people talked about, but you know, there was a lot of whaling in this book and it didn't really bother me. So, those are my thoughts. I am so glad that I got it in before the movie came out. The movie uh, will probably be a bit of a big deal since it has Chris Hemsworth in it and Killian Murphy and I think some other people, but those are the only ones I remember. Um, so yeah it's exciting to be on top of things for once um i hope to do the same thing with unbroken i was really bummed to hear that a movie was coming out of that because i was like i haven't read it yet you can't come out with a movie i'll seem like i'm trying to jump on the bandwagon which i'm not anyway um thanks for watching i am looking forward to coming out with a new project kind of thing soon. I guess I could give you a hint. Um, Jane Eyre. I don't, I, I, we'll see how it goes, but it's, I'm excited. Bye!